This is Barry Zalma speaking for Claim School Incorporated with another true crime of insurance fraud video, this one number 71, entitled Miscarriage Manipulation for Money. Rita was five months pregnant. Her entire family greeted her condition as an opportunity to make sufficient money for a happy Christmas in sunny Hawaii. For four generations, Rita's family has lived luxuriously on insurance claims. Their last names changed more often than their underwear. Wherever they go, they carry a small plastic valve of soapy liquid and a small razor. Depending on the size of the town they are visiting, they stay a week, a month, or a year. One member of the family will claim to have slipped and fallen in a restaurant or grocery store. With the razor, they will induce bleeding at their hairline or on an arm or leg. They will be pleasant victims with no interest in profit. Grocers and their insurers rapidly and fairly settle their claims in fear that their injuries will increase. Rita had been a professional claimant since she was eight. She fell in the most luxurious restaurants in Las Vegas, New York City, Baltimore, Washington, D.C., St. Louis, Missouri, and Beverly Hills, California. Shortly after she began to walk, her family taught her how to slip and look like she was hurt without actually causing any physical damage. By the time she was five, she could limp on either leg, hold one arm limp, wince with pain when touched, and give all the symptoms of a severely injured person. By the time she was ten, she had a clear knowledge of anatomy and knew all of the symptoms of soft tissue injury. Now, at 22, pregnant with the child of a sailor she met in San Diego, whose name she does not remember, Rita is ready to move into major profit-making scams. Her brother Aaron would pose as her husband as they worked their major hotels and restaurants of Sacramento, California. At the Holiday Inn, she fell in a puddle of water in the lobby restroom where two innocent women ran to her assistance. Oh my God, Rita moaned, did I hurt the baby? Don't worry, one of the ladies said, trying to soothe her. My friend is going to the manager to have him call an ambulance so you can be ch checked out. But, but I'm not hurt. You can't take a chance with a baby coming. Let the doctors check you out, the innocent lady said, with honest concern and compassion. But I have no money. We are newlywed. We just stopped here for lunch. I can't pay a doctor. Don't worry, dear. I saw what they left here in the bathroom. The hotel will take care of everything. You just lay here until the ambulance arrives. Rita? of course, did as she was told, smiling inwardly but outwardly appearing to show sincere concern for her unborn child. This is my first baby, Rita told the paramedic when he arrived. I'm so afraid my big sister had three miscarriages before she gave birth to her first child. Could, could that happen to me? I'm sure it won't, the paramedic said confidently. Just relax. We're going to take you to the hospital so the doctor can check you and the baby out. But I don't have any money or insurance to pay the hospital. It's okay. The Holiday Inn has already agreed to take care of your bill. Rita rode to the hospital with her husband sitting in the ambulance beside her, wringing his hands. They left the name a mail drop address and a telephone number which connected to the family cellular telephone with the hotel. She and the baby were found healthy and allowed to leave, although the doctor, because of the family history of miscarriage, noted on the hospital record that her condition was guarded and that she should cautiously watch for any spotting or other indication of a potential miscarriage. 
In the next four days, Rita fell in five hotels, two department stores, and three restaurants in Greater Sacramento. She rode to the hospital in an ambulance twice and visited a local chiropractor known to her family four times. The family lived and traveled in three 60-foot motor homes equipped with cellular telephones, a computer, and all the comforts of a luxurious home. The family knew better than to be greedy. They never presented more than ten claims each in any one city. Rita stopped falling and spent the next three weeks mailing copies of the medical bills and the doctor's prognoses to various insurance adjusters representing each of the establishments in which she had fallen. The medical bills ranged in amounts from $1,400 to $2,300, all for an initial examination, x-rays, and occasional MRI, fetal monitoring, and ultrasound examinations of the baby. When the adjusters called, either she or Aaron would negotiate with the adjusters, advising that they were just passing through Sacramento on their way to Seattle, where they intended to settle. Aaron had a job in Sacramento that would keep him busy until after Christmas, and then they were to move on. They wanted to settle the claims, they told the adjusters, as soon as reasonably possible, so that they could leave Sacramento without the claim outstanding. Rita and Aaron were reasonable people. They told the adjusters they did not wish to hire a lawyer. Although they were afraid they might lose the baby, the doctors had assured them that the baby was unhurt by the fall. The adjusters, sensing an ability to settle the claim quickly before the baby was born, with possible extra damage, worked quickly to gain the confidence of Rita and Aaron. They wanted a release that would protect their clients. They had no knowledge of Rita's family history. Liability was clear. Independent witnesses observed a slick, soapy substance on the floor and on Rita after she fell. Rita and Aaron were professional claims presenters. They played upon the innocence and good faith of the insurance adjusters. They would tell the adjusters, we don't want money. We just can't afford to pay the doctor's bill. Please pay those for us and we'll be happy. Of course, most of the doctors were in league with the family and had already agreed to return to the family 50% of every dollar received from the insurance company. Most of the building, billings were fake. The family created medical billing forms on the HP laptop they had purchased at Walmart for $1,300 that they kept in the motorhome. 80% of the services billed by real doctors had never been performed since the doctors knew Rita was uninjured. The adjusters, knowing the law and knowing that if litigation was filed, Rita would be entitled to money for her pain and suffering, insisted that Rita take more money than the medical bills. Most of the claims were settled for between six and $25,000, depending on the generosity or gullibility of the individual adjusters. Rita's potential miscarriage brought her family over $100,000 for their stay in Sacramento. Her brothers, sisters, cousins, and nephews falling all over the city generated another $100,000 in claims payments. Their welcome in Sacramento worn thin, the family motorhomes traveled west, to San Francisco. The motorhomes were parked in a long-term secure parking lot and the entire family boarded airplanes for a three-week holiday in Maui. This type of insurance fraud is simply too easy for the criminal and it is necessary that all adjusters faced with such a claim always reported to the All Claims database so that if the names used by Rita or her husband pop up in more than one location, the fraud might be detected. On the other hand, Rita and her brother and the rest of her family are enjoying a wonderful vacation in Hawaii 
and their time in Maui will be well spent to heal from the various skinnings and scrapes and bruises they may have obtained in their false falls and trips and take off and reconsider the next city in which they will ply their trade and hopefully continue to enjoy a life of crime. And someday, a wise adjuster with a thorough investigation and the help of the National Insurance Crime Bureau and the All Claims Database put an end to this crime and put Rita and her family in a pleasant gray bar hotel also called a prison. This video was adapted from my book Insurance Fraud Cost Everyone which is an addendum to my treatise in two volumes, Insurance Fraud, Second Edition, all of which are available as paperbacks and Kindle books and some in hardcover from Amazon.com. If you viewed this video on YouTube, please click the like button, and if you viewed it on Rumble, please click the Rumble button. Thank you for your attention.